let's look on Twitter and see what we're mad about today. Now we've got economic disorder. There's economic disorder. Look at verse 29. Uh, social disorder. He says there's social disorder. Social disorder. Just think Facebook. Uh, and that's just on Facebook. Oh. Pulpit plagiarism. Wasn't expecting that one. Um, I'm not going to talk about J.D. Greer or Ed Litton in this video and that circumstance. But I do want to talk about this idea of pulpit plagiarism. Of pastors plagiarizing other sermons from other pastors. Uh, it's a big problem. I think it's a problem that's really getting found out more because of the internet that we're able to listen to these things and, you know, kind of compare in the moment. Uh, but also, I think it's happening more because of the accessibility that we have to people's sermons and books and blog posts and podcasts and all those different avenues of communication that because of our own human nature, people are just twisting it to their own ends. Now, the first time that I came into contact with this problem was back in 2009. I was a sophomore in Bible college. I was super excited about theology, super excited about preaching, writing sermons that would never get preached. Uh, didn't, you know, I didn't have access to the pulpit all that often, but I was writing sermons all the time. And so I was watching sermons all the time too. Uh, there was a conference that was being held uh, I think it was the resurgence that was hosting this conference and they had D.A. Carson come in and I love D.A. Carson and he came in and he preached a sermon called the scandal of the cross. I think they even turned it into a book, uh, but I think it was from first Corinthians. Maybe uh, don't quote me on that, but I love that sermon. And I remember taking notes in my dorm room and like super excited about that sermon. And then just a couple days later, I heard it again. <laughs> uh, I was sitting, you know, at my church, listening to my pastor. And, you know, I had my notebook open, ready to take notes. And I quickly realized that I've heard all this. I just heard all this. And I had heard it from D.A. Carson. Now, I was so young, naive, innocent, whatever word you want to use. But I was just excited in that moment. I was like, oh, my pastor likes D.A. Carson. That's cool. He watched the same thing as me. That's awesome. I can't wait to talk to uh, talk about it after with him. And so I remember after the sermon going up to him and being like, big fan of D.A. Carson, huh? And I'm thinking like, we're going to have a great conversation about D.A. Carson. He loves D.A. Carson. I love D.A. Carson. Let's talk about D.A. Carson. And uh, I just remember the look of horror on my pastor's face. Uh, he did not want to talk about D.A. Carson. I quickly found that out and he backpedaled out of that conversation hard. <laughs> um, uh, at the time I was weirded out. I was like, why? I wanted to talk about this. I thought we were like, this is something that we had in common and you know, we can, you know, hang out and talk about this. Uh, I wanted to talk about the sermon, how cool it was. And uh, now looking back, I can see that, yeah, this guy probably thought that I had found him out and, you know, knew that he was caught up in a lie and, you know, didn't want to get in trouble, uh, didn't want to lose his job. Things like those, those kinds of things probably went through his head and that's why he acted the way he did. Um, but that, that's a problem that I've seen just not even just then, but all over, even today, even today, I kind of hesitate to say this, but there is someone in this town where I live that will go into a pulpit and he'll preach. And if you search the scripture passage, and the title of his sermon, you will find like maybe like number two, one through three of the top hits of Google will be a famous sermon uh, from some famous pastor that he's just going into the pulpit and saying that it's his. Um, that's not right. That's plagiarism. That's stealing. Now, you might be watching this, and if you're a pastor, you might be going like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's stealing. I would never do that. And one, I'm glad you say that. Two, plagiarism isn't just that. The idea of plagiarism is passing off someone else's ideas as your own. Now, if it's purposeful, like with those individuals, where they're just taking entire sermons and saying, oh, well, the Lord just taught me this this week, you know, and going into the pulpit and acting as if they had written that sermon, that's obviously stealing, but there are more subtle ways of plagiarizing 
uh, other people's sermons. Uh, there is not giving people uh, the credit that they deserve for a quote. Even, even just a small quote, that's stealing too. Uh, or, or when you go into like a commentary and it has a very good structure of a passage and you just take that and you just use that. Well, if you don't give that commentary writer uh, the the credit that that person deserves for coming up with that, or at least say uh, there was one commentary that really helped me understand this passage, you know, something like that, then people are just going to think that you're saying that you came up with this. That's also plagiarism. Now, you might not think it's plagiarism, but that person in the pulpit, whether you are... Uh, directly taking an entire sermon or if you're just using an outline or you know some bullet points what I call gospel nuggets that you're you're trying to uh, you know use all these in and you're in your mind you're like yeah I didn't come up with this but that person who's sitting in the the pew they probably think that you did and if you don't give that person credit whether it's a commentary writer whether it's another pastor um, you know someone who's uh, dead, uh, long gone, uh, someone who's alive right now, whatever the case is, if you pass it off as if it's yours, then that's plagiarism. And plagiarism is stealing, and stealing is sinful. Now, if you're a pastor and you've been doing this for a long time, there are pastors who get caught up in this. I would say repent. Um, you need to repent of that sin just like uh, someone who commits adultery needs to uh, repent of that sin. It's the same kind of sin in the eyes of God. Uh, so you need to repent of that. You need to come clean to your congregation uh, and follow, you know, whatever steps that they set out for you. Um, or if you're in, at a church where the pastor is plagiarizing, you need to call him out on it. Um, you know, Go to him one-on-one. -on -one. You know, you're in a local church context. So I think it's appropriate to follow that Matthew 18 example of going one-on-one -on -one with a problem that you have with the brother. And, you know, if nothing happens, then, you know, go and get some other people involved. Uh, and, I mean, it could come to uh, uh, an issue of church discipline. It really could. Um, it's sad that that's never happened. Think about that. You know, church discipline is for public sin, and plagiarism in the pulpit is a public sin. And I've never heard of a pastor being church disciplined because of pulpit plagiarism. I've never heard of it being a threat, even. Uh, that that's kind of that kind of tells you where things are at. That people are just kind of okay with it. We shouldn't be okay with it. You shouldn't be okay with it. I'm not okay with it. Uh, when I preach a sermon. Uh, I always say, you know, a commentary writer said this, or I'll say the individual. Now, a lot of people might, you know, kind of hear that and be like, well, that kind of sounds snooty. If you're just quoting people all the time, trying to show me how smart you are, how many books you've read. But that's not why I do it. I do it because it's right, because I didn't come up with that idea. And we need to be very careful about what kind of example we're being to the congregation when we're preaching behind what Martin Lloyd-Jones famously said, the sacred desk. Uh, so that's my thoughts on pulpit plagiarism. If you like this video, like it. Uh, if you like this content, subscribe to the channel. And next week, I'll probably talk about whatever else Twitter is mad about. See you then. Thank you.